well, today something really great happened. And I just it just happened 15 minutes before I signed on. I, there's this pier near my house in, on a lake where I walk all the time. And I've been there a billion times. And today I'm walking. So combined with the fact that you talk about the body and that it's actually a good, can be a pleasurable thing, because in my world, it's nothing but horror. And yeah. has been my whole life. And my, I have had my, what I call my beef with God that he stuck me in this body and it's been kind of an unconscious thing most of my life and it's yeah. it's a it's, lot of conditioning a lot a of, lot of conditioning yeah. a lot of you know abuse as a kid like you did yeah. went through but along with that was what you you were talking about self-inquiry which i've been doing forever but what i was missing was not doing it 24 7 when a, a while back a few times ago you, you were talking about how you do it all the time everything yeah. You were doing I it when I started doing it. Yeah. I did it that way. Yeah, and yeah. So just, you're talking because about. you can do it with every every thought, every feeling, whatever comes up. What's experiencing this? What's experiencing? Yes. This? What is yes. it experiencing this? And that's really how self inquiry should be done. It's not something you just do when you're meditating. You don't even need to do it then. You just you just do it through every moment of your life, and it and it it draws your attention back, you know, further than this 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 like i thought you know that, that you think you are and said so what's aware of that what's aware of the i thought what's aware of you know so there's every opportunity there's everything that happens is an opportunity you know Who, yep. who's, what's aware of, of peeing what's aware of brushing teeth what's aware of everything yeah so I've been doing that over the last few weeks since you mentioned it, doing it more 24-7 or as much as possible, like way more than I used to. Yeah. So here I am today going on my walk on the pier like I do all the time right before getting ready to sign on. And I got to tell you, I had it just it, the, the unconscious thought that I have had my whole life that won't leave me alone, that just pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds. I'm stuck in this body. I'm stuck in this body. It was just, and I was like, wait a second, hold on, hold on. Self-inquiry. Mm -hmm. And something just crumbled. It wasn't even mental. It wasn't, it was definitely experiential. I just went, whoa, wait, Peter's not stuck in his body. He's talked about being <laughs> being on the other side of the earth. He's not yeah. stuck. Wait a minute. Who is this How I? How can I be stuck inside this thing? How could that be? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's some perceptions can give us this, this feeling. But when we let go, we don't feel that way. You know, we don't know where we are. When we're in not knowing, we don't know where we are. We're not in a in a central location we're sort of everywhere you know that's i mean we can't really say where we are it's unlimited even to say we're everywhere words just fall away you know words just they don't really work in our direct experience the words whatever words we want to say we're like it's no cancel is it no cancel that it's and then you just stop you know and you're just happy with the not knowing that you can't put it in. You can't say where you are, what you are, who you are. It's you're you're beyond anything like that. That's all. It's beyond anything. And that's what's aware of the thought that I can't, why am I stuck in this body? That's always aware of everything. So it's aware of that thought too, but it's free. It's aware of that thought, but it isn't stuck in the body, you know, and yet somehow the conditioning is so powerful in the mind and the and the attention and the belief on that is so powerful that it's ignoring what you are and saying that you're this you know it's it's not aware of what you are anymore the attention is not on what you are it's on this always and for a moment now by inquiring suddenly it was like oh i'm this i'm something whatever this is but I'm, so I, this is not stuck in a body, right? I don't even know where this is. It's in the body too. It's not separate from anything, but it's not limited to this. It just doesn't feel limited to this, right? It doesn't feel that way. It's a direct experience that you're not limited to your body. It doesn't have anything to do with thoughts. It's a direct experience of reality, right? And when, and the thinking I'm stuck in this body, that's a thought. That's not real right? Because you know that you're not now, right? But before, for all, that's how powerful the conditioning is. So the appreciation 
for all this time, this thought, 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 which you're aware of. Every time you talk about it, something is saying that, is aware that there's these thoughts. So those thoughts can't be you because you're aware of them. Right. And now, yeah, so you're you you never were trapped, right? This has always been free. What you are has always been free. It has never, never been trapped by that thought, never been trapped by the the experience of being trapped. It has never been trapped by that. It's but it's been aware of it. That's all. It's it can't be touched by anything. Yeah. Wonderful. It's amazing. It's yeah. Amazing. It left me speechless. <laughs> I could barely yeah. tell you about it right now because it just yeah. happened. But I wanted you to know because it because it was thanks to your teachings. That yeah. Well, there's a lot more to come. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, to open because that is a great breakthrough. That's a great breakthrough. You know, to be identified with a body stuck in the body, which is a very common thought that I think most people have, you know, that they're in the body. I did, you know, I, I remember as a teenager, you know, like looking in the mirror and combing my hair. I had hair in those days in <laughs> whatever way, you know, in a certain way. And how did I look at this thing? I was so identified with my body as, as, as what I, you know, who I am. I mean, I had moments that were outside of that. But I didn't understand at all what that was. And I just sort of ignored it. And I thought, like, the important thing is, like, how do I look? <laughs> That's the important thing. <laughs> I remember as a teenager doing that. Yeah. 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 No, it's that's that's what happens. Yeah. I don't think I felt stuck in my body, really. But uh, but I did feel that I was. I didn't feel that there was that I didn't. I had experiences that I was outside the body from the time I was quite young, that I was more than that, but I didn't have any idea what that was. So I didn't really pay much attention to it. You know, it did feel better, but because it didn't fit into anything that I had been taught or conditioned to do, I, my attention just didn't stay on it very long. It mostly stayed on being in the body. This is what it is. And went through that normal thing that everybody does. Normal, right? That's normal life. Normal life is, is living in this same illusion. You know, that's normal life. Awakening is not normal yet. <laughs> it's quite different than most people experience, you know. But that revelation that you have is, is always here, right? It's always here for us because that is truth. So it's always here for us, you know. It, it feels now to you like, like something new happened, like something great and new, <laughs> like something was added on. But actually, nothing was added on. What was the illusion was taken away, and the illusion is limited, right? Because the illusion is inside the body, in here. This is it. This is how big I am. I'm only in here, you know. That's it. I'm only this big, which is a very vulnerable place to be, you know. This is it. You know, it's terribly vulnerable because the body's going to die at some point, you know? So it, the very best it can do, it still can't survive, right? So if this is it. It's, we're, <laughs> we've come into a world of woe, basically, you know? If, if that were true, fortunately, it's not, you know? And, and because the truth is always here, as long as, you know, we have, as long as we have that one experience that you have, that doesn't ever go away because it's truth. You know, it feels really good. And we're just never going to forget that. You know, everything just opens from here. Everything opens more from here. A breakthrough, we call it, you know, breakthrough. It's a good word, a breakthrough, because it, it's like we have these limitations and they're, they seem so solid to us. They just keep going on and on. It seems like they're made out of brick. You know, it seems like it's a prison made of, 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 of stone walls and bars, and it's very, very solid, indestructible, right? That's what it feels like. So the breakthrough means that's broken, you know? Of course, there never really were any bricks or stones or bars, you know? There never were any. I think, is it Rumi or somebody said uh, that the, the prison door has always been open? <laughs> the whole time <laughs> it's always been wide open we've been there complaining about it and, yeah 
Yeah. yeah it was a really it, strange. It, it was came such out a, of the prison. It was such a strange sensation because here I am in the middle of the pier. And the word breakthrough is great because I had this overwhelming sensation of crumbling. Yeah. But my eyes, saw, I mean, there was nothing crumbling. Right. But there was a sensation of just yeah. everything just went. Because with our belief, we've, we've created this prison. We've created this thing and, and, we've, and we keep doing it over and over again. So it, it appears to be extremely solid. So we talk about dissolving and crumbling even though they're, they're just thoughts. But it feels like that because yeah. while we have these thoughts, we are like in a prison, you know? We're in a prison. It feels, it might as well be brick walls built all around us, you know, for that. This body may, might as well be made out of stone, right? And yet yeah. when, you know, when we open to what we really are, that illusion crumbles, and because it's been built so long, it feels like it's crumbling. It feels like it's dissolving. It feels like something real is like, you know, being yeah. broken down. Yeah. And the freedom feels good. That's the wonderful thing about it. Because when we op the more we open to truth, the better it feels, right? So we open to this truth of this, where I'm not limited to here. And, and the experience is a really good feeling, this feeling of freedom, liberation. You know, love, peace is just more, you know, it's just, wow. And that's, that's why truth is attractive to us. You know, we feel truth and it's attractive to us that we feel better. This is not built into the human body. In some ways it hurts us because we're pursuing pleasure and avoiding pain. And that can hurt us to understand what that pain and suffering comes from. You know, but the basic instinct of doing this is what leads us to truth, because when we experience truth, it feels good. And then if we go back again to the limitation, it feels horrible. <laughs> it feels worse than it did before. So we kind of go, yeah, I think I know where I'm going. <laughs> I think I know what side of the fence I'm going to be on. You know, it's just much better over here. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that you're not going to have those experiences again, but, but you'll experience in them from this. So you'll see and you'll know to come back, right? It's such a good technique. What's aware of this? What's aware of this? You know, some, and you know something has to be aware of it, right? So it's easy to come back. What's aware? And that's putting our attention back on this. What's aware of thoughts? What's aware of this? So our attention has to go, I want to know. Oh, <laughs> that. <laughs> that, you know. That that feels so good. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy, Wendy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What a great relief, too, because of all the like kind of suffering and pain in the body for all that thing. This is the real healing. For that to realize that you never were in there and to and now that you can watch this from this freedom whatever's happening in the body you can observe it from this freedom it's a very different thing it's not overwhelming anymore you know it's like and and there's so much wisdom in it to see it from this open expanded place where you're not limited to the body you can learn so much about the body from there when you felt limited to it it's there was too much resistance you couldn't really experience everything that's going on in the body now you know you can you know it's not going to overwhelm you it's not going to harm you because you're free of it right in some ways it doesn't really matter what happens to the body because you are not affected by that right and that way you can look at any pain you can see things in, in a much more realistic way a much more truthful way yeah it's wonderful mm. a breakthrough yay <laughs> yeah in in J japanese they call it kensho kensho is an awakening yeah it's an awakening you know i mean awakenings come in many many forms and and stages and and to know you're not the body is a big awakening yeah it's a big awakening to know you're not the body
Yeah, I've always known it intellectually, but there was a part of me that was just, the, you know, the miserable little child part was stuck in the misery of childhood yeah. going, you know, that part, that's the part that just went. In, intellectually doesn't help. You nope. know, the only, the only way intellectually helps is if you become a teacher later, you have a vocabulary of some things to say. That's it. That's really all the use of it is. It doesn't really do anything more than that you know i mean it can help us like not be totally shocked by the experience you know like and say oh i I think i know but that's about it it doesn't really do much we have to have the direct experience that is our knowing that's the only knowing we have we experience it and of course you can't say right if you're if you're beyond the body not limited to the body what are you we don't we can't say right there's nothing we can say about what we are. You know, that's the beauty of it. It's unlimited, right? If we said something about it, we'd be limiting it. And it is unlimited. So we realize, you know, and everything I try and say, you see now, even with your mind to try and put a thing on, you'll, you'll have words and they'll just like, no, no, they'll just fall away. It's just, no, that's not it. That's not it. You know, and that's wonderful. So you experience trying enough and seeing that nothing can really stick, that no word can really do it. And then you just stop. You don't care anymore. Yeah, you know, right. You don't even bother trying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good, and that's how you stay there. Because if you made another word, then you would be stuck in that place. You know, the truth of what you are has no words. It's, it's a continuous mystery. That's the beauty of it. You know, the world, everything we see in the world is limited in terms of its form. All form is limited. The body, coffee cup, the pen, everything is limited in form. It it has a shelf life. You know, it changes and it's and it's vulnerable. It's affected by things. You have a pen, you can break it. You know, you could throw a coffee cup on the floor and smash it. The body, you know, can be heard in many ways. But what we are is unlimited. So it's not like that. It doesn't change. It has this built-in, I don't think confidence is, nothing really fits in what it is, but people try and be confident. And the confidence of this is just beyond, (laughs) it's unlimited. It doesn't, confidence makes no sense because it's everything. Right. It's what we do. You know, there's no lack of confidence in everything, you know, in this limitlessness. It's limitless. How what could it be unconfident about? <laughs> it's limitless. <laughs> right. You can't. Yeah. I first noticed that a number of years ago. I remember just I was walking somewhere and uh, at night with my friend and I suddenly realized that I had this unlimited confidence, you know? I just thought, well, this is weird. (laughs) Because I I think I was sort of confident, more or less, but relatively, you know, but it's relative, so it's not totally confident. And there's times when I wasn't confident and suddenly that was just gone, you know, it just disappeared. It didn't mean that suddenly I was confident, it's just the whole idea of confidence just didn't exist anymore, you know? There was no way to not be confident. You know, it just didn't even make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's celebrate this. <laughs> let's celebrate this. I think we can all just kind of feel this breakthrough that Wendy had. Has, too. Yeah, a breakthrough doesn't stop either. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And that's, that's a lot to make me speechless. And that's just the right attitude, too. That's just the right approach. Yeah. Actually, what Muji often says about this is that he said, when that happens, to zip yourself up in your sleeping bag. He doesn't mean literally, it's probably hot where you are. <laughs> But, uh, you know, just kind of spend time in 
in silence, you know, spend time, don't be triggered, don't turn on the television, don't, you know, even go on the internet, just spend some time just letting this teach you, letting what you are teach you, you know, letting it reveal to you. It has a lot to reveal to you, you know, it's not going to reveal to you all like in, in, in a few days because it, it never stops, but, but allow it to really you know, to just kind of, yeah, let it do its thing to kind of marinate in it and let it be without pulling your attention onto other things, you know, as much as possible, right? Can Do you have a pretty free week? Yes, I do, fortunately. Good. I do plan to do a lot of meditation, yeah. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and don't, when you meditate, don't, expect anything just open you know just open that's all you know be grateful is wonderful gratitude is a very healing transformational ex experience to have it does a lot you know if you feel gratitude don't try anything but if you feel gratitude just let it go you know let it be whatever you're feeling let it be including if you have any disturbing feelings too because the mind will probably try and come back at some point and, 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 and distract you, you know, in some way, because it's a habit. You're free right now. So the mind doesn't necessarily like that. <laughs> it doesn't like that. Let's put it that way. It, it, it wants control again. You know, it wants you back in the prison, really. You know? It made the prison. <sighs> It made the prison, and that's, that's, that's a momentum. It's a habit. It's a momentum. So it probably will come back. But you, the way to deal with that is, is to go back to asking that question, like, what's aware of that? What's aware of this thought that says, don't do this, or do this, or this is bad, or whatever? What's aware of that? You know? And just keep asking. You know? And if the mind wants to throw a bunch of answers up, okay, fine. That's what it does. You know? But don't get distracted by them and say, well, no, that's not it <laughs> because it can't be a thought. So there can be no answer. So what's aware, keep asking, what's aware of that answer? What's aware of my, of this disturbing thought? What's aware of this and keep coming back, you know, to that. Yeah. To that, that you don't know, you know, not to that, like some certain feeling or some certain thing, but just to, whatever it is, you know, just, just coming back to what we are, you know, the mystery beyond understanding. <laughs> Suffering is a good thing, isn't it, in a way? I think maybe, I don't know if you can see it now, but in not too long a time, you're going to appreciate all the suffering you've gone through and see that 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 is one of the main reasons why you had this breakthrough. And, and when you see that, you'll be very grateful. You'll realize the purpose of suffering. You'll realize, oh, suffering isn't so bad after all, <laughs> right? Because if it gives you that freedom, isn't it worth any suffering that could possibly ever exist? Yeah, actually. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that you see from free yeah. that, that the suffering is like wow i could have gone through 10 times even worse than that to get this you know and and this does help that i don't know exactly how in many ways beyond anything that i know but it seems to be a very common thing one it, it does tell us it, it motivates us to look for something more doesn't it you know it like there's something that's if we're suffering a lot we just say like this can't be all there is to life right there's just something in us that says this can't be all there is to life i just you know not that i don't accept it but it just can't be you know life is like it can't just be pure suffering it, it's there's got to be something else here and and not because other people say it or because you've read it or something but you really feel that there must be something else that somehow this seems limited and kind of crazy you know, in a way, it just, and life somehow, somehow, you know, that there's a kind of perfection to it. And that doesn't seem to be it. So what, what is going on here? 
you know, what is this something more? It's here. So that question, suffering can give us that question. That's a good question, right? It takes us, if it's something more, it's less limited than what we're experiencing now. It's something more than this limitation. So it puts us on that kind of path which is the spiritual path, right? Everybody in the spiritual path has had that question. There must be something more. Otherwise, why? Why are we here if we don't have that question, you know? If we figure we've got it all sussed out and understand everything, <laughs> why would we come here? You know, there wouldn't be any reason to do that. We'd just go on with our life thinking we have everything figured out and live our life in that whatever limited way that is. You know, which is fine. It's fine. It seems a bit of a waste of a life, but, you know, because, well, because we're not alive, for one. <laughs> we don't know what it's actually like to be alive. You're experiencing what it's like to be alive, you know, which feels really good to be alive. It's amazing because it's so simple. Simply being alive feels super good, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the body, the condition of the body, you know, you can feel the same thing lying in a hospital bed dying of cancer, right? There is no, there's nothing. In a prison cell, you know, if you're fully alive, you know this experience of what you are beyond knowing, beyond being able to say that aliveness, prison cell means nothing. A real, you know, prison cell or dying in in uh, in a hospital room of cancer it means nothing if you know who you are that is not touched by anything that's just free always unchanging unchanging is an interesting word because that can be confusing too there's something that is definitely unchanging forever you know and and you might be realizing this wendy i don't know if you realize this but that what you're experiencing now has been what you are from the moment you were born that this has never not been there whether you weren't experiencing it or not that's all your attention wasn't on it and you weren't experiencing but it has always always been here do you experience that yeah you look back I do. yeah isn't I that do. pretty amazing it's yeah. amazing because it also changes constantly but it's also unchanging at the same yes. time with the exactly. crazy paradox yes yes it's that's why it was saying about change about changeless because something is continuously changing all the time <laughs> like just pouring changing in every millisecond right and and something else is completely not changing and they're not separate from each other it's quite a paradox that experience but but that's the feeling of it though yeah. the feeling is undeniable and, and the thing that doesn't change makes the thing that makes the constant changing wonderful instead of frightening right because if we didn't have the unchanging that would be like whoa whoa <laughs> what's going on here right you'd be trying to grab hold of something you know to find and it's all changing so there's nothing to grab hold of so you're experiencing it from the unchanging that's all also right. always changing so that makes it's not overwhelming it's wonderful that it's always changing you know it's like constantly new and fresh and yet for all eternity has never changed <laughs> it's really it's perfect isn't it i mean what more could you ask for than that you know it's like it's beyond the mind to even understand it and yet this is the perfection of life. It's true of a tree and a coffee cup and a, and a pen. Everything is this, unchanging, never having changed for all eternity and continuously changing in every way, in every millisecond and smaller. Yeah, 
that's kind of wild. <laughs> it's really wild. Thank you so much, Peter. I, I, I had faith in you. I've never had anyone tell me these things. And your childhood's so similar to mine. And I just, I, when you were talking about the perfection of life, the first time I heard you say that over a year and a half ago now, I thought you were crazy. <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> perfection, huh? But I had now, faith in you. Now you feel it, right? Now you feel the perfection. Do you? I feel it. Now yeah. I feel it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. we don't have to understand and, and make, you know, detailed things about perfect in this way. I mean, I did for a while. You know, I noticed things. And I go, oh, that's why it's perfect. That's why it's perfect. That's why it's perfect. But there's no need to really do that. Right. You know, right. there's just a feeling that it's perfect. And, and that there's a feeling of truth, right? You know what I'm talking about? There's a feeling of somehow this is totally true. And, and it's not a mental thing. It's not like the truth of the mind is this relative truth. This equals this. So that must be true. And if I drop this, then gravity must be. It's not like that. It's a feeling yeah. that's undeniably true in a way that the mind could never be. That any of our truths of the mind can never be as sure as this truth is. Right? This is just an undeniable feeling of truth. Right? Do you feel that? This undeniable truth of, of life of truth that's that's the truth that i talk about when i say truth that's the truth that i always mean that's why you can't describe it that's why it can't be but it is truth it is this undeniable feeling of if the entire world came and said what i'm experiencing is totally not true and is like in a form of insanity or craziness or is a complete illusion it wouldn't make any difference to me at all. <laughs> this is absolutely true. There's no, no possible way of changing this feeling you know, of truth. It just cannot be denied in any way. It's, it's very different than mental truth. That we be believe truth, right? It's beyond belief. It's truth that's beyond, it's beyond. It's stronger than any belief possibly ever could be by far. And it's just this, this feeling. That's knowing. That's what, when, they, when in spiritual terms, when we talk about knowing, that's what knowing is. It's not a knowing of the mind. It's this knowing that somehow I'm experiencing undeniable truth. You know, it's kind of strange because it's, it's a feeling. So it's good. I can talk to you about that from that same experience that you're having. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, thank you for thanking me. But it isn't really me. Yeah, it's it's you. It's you. It's totally all you. Right? It wouldn't matter what I said or what I did or who I was if you weren't ready to experience this. And even without me, you would. You know, because you were ready for it. That's why it happened. It's as simple as that, really. It's beyond it. We do a lot of things, and it's all helpful. Everything that we do is fine and good, but this awakening doesn't really happen through that. You know, it happens because there's a readiness in us. Something has surrendered, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and the truth of what you are is always here waiting. But I mean, we could say, but it's so damn patient. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Is there any way to, you know, get it to speed up? You know, it's, it's, it's just truth. It doesn't have to try anything. It's not like the thoughts of our, you know, separate self. It doesn't, it's not impatient <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know, it could wait 10 billion years you know, and not make any difference to it. Yeah, because it always is complete. So in some ways, it might be frustrating that it's that kind of patience, but it is like that, you know. And, and when we open to it, we're happy for that because it's, it's completely complete. It's a, I still experience gratitude myself. I have to say, when I think about it, Many people meditate for like 40, 50 years and have very 
strong spiritual practices like I did. But many people have that. Many, the majority of people have this and don't wake up. You know, so I'm very grateful that I woke up and I can't, don't say it's because I did all this work and I did all this practice and I did this and I had that. I mean, some of those things have something to do with it, but that isn't it. I mean, I could have gone my whole life and not awakened. So that's the gratitude that I feel is it might not have happened, you know, and it did. <laughs> so there's like huge gratitude, you know, it did. Thank you. Or who, who, I don't know who I'm thanking, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, there is a lot of gratitude. I mean, Muji feels enormous gratitude to Papaji, his teacher. Right. And all Papaji really did was insult him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, it was the right insulting. It came at the right time and it was the right thing to do. But that's it. It was like one day of like this kind of really terribly insulting, abusive behavior. <laughs> and, and yeah, and he woke up from that. And to the, you know, all these years, he's been like totally grateful and, and completely devoted and loving of Papaji because of that. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, if you know Muji's story, if it wasn't for Papaji, it would have been something else. It could have been anything. You know, he could have gotten on a plane, you know, going back to England and uh, a stewardess could have said, you have funny hair or something like that. That could have done it. You know, anything can. Yeah, we never know. Zen is filled with these stories of people that had years of practice with the Zen master and lived in the monastery. And then they left or the Zen master kicked them out as they weren't making any progress. And uh, just, they woke up because the, the sound of a pebble hitting bamboo and suddenly they woke up. Yeah. Many stories like this, you know, another person had, uh, he was ignorant and he didn't, he misunderstood what the teacher was saying and, and, he was saying some profound thing about enlightenment. He thought he was talking about grass slippers, <laughs> the kind of woven with grass. And so he, he kept, as a mantra, kept saying grass slippers, grass slippers for years. <laughs> and then he, uh, he tripped and his grass slippers like, like flew off his feet and broke into pieces. And he woke up. He saw them break into pieces and he totally woke up. <laughs> so you, ne you never know where it comes from, you know? I mean, teachings are good as sort of prompts, but it ha it, it, it's life. It's life, you know? That's all I try and do is point back to life. And life did this, you know? The, the dock was as important as my teachings and the path that you walk on and everything that's been going on and your suffering and the pain, all of that is, those are like profound teachers. You know, we don't realize this, that life is constantly teaching us in every moment and whatever is happening is teaching us. You know, when we, when you open, I think now you're, you, you kind of understand not to resist the things that, were resisted before, right? The, the pain or other things or whatever might come or, or sadness or a hurricane or whatever to just open to it and see, what is this teaching me? Why is this here? You know, if everything's perfect, this must be too. This must be a blessing somehow. This must be what's truly for my benefit which is, of course, in miracles, says we don't know what's in our own best interest, what's for our benefit. We don't. Because often the things that are most for our benefit, we think are the least for our benefit. Say, so why am I cursed with this terrible thing? Why am I cursed to be stuck in this body with pain? You know, because it's for your benefit. That's why. It's entirely for your benefit. Why did I have abusive parents? Because it's for your benefit. It's entirely for your benefit, you know? Without an abusive family, would I have awakened? No, all these things contributed to this, you know? It was necessary. It was all part of this, everything. I don't, you know, I mean, we realize the little me, <laughs> I don't make the rules. As I sometimes say, I'm not the boss of me, you know? <laughs> Kids say like, you know, you're not the boss of me. 
I say, I'm not the boss of me. You know, this little I is not the boss of me. Life is the boss of me. I'm one with life, so it's not even the boss, but. You know, it's a wonderful way to live in this way, to just, you know, follow the flow of life, however it's going. It really is. It's so, it's so efficient and practical. It may not sound it, you know, to, to our mind, but it's completely efficient and practical and, and kind of miraculous. These things that we want to happen, if we do nothing, they just seem to rise in front of us. You know, and we just say, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's exactly what I needed, but I did absolutely nothing for that to happen. It's just here, you know. I think when we limit our life to this limited self-centered thing, we're filtering off 99% of life. So we don't see all these opportunities and all this abundance is being poured into us constantly. We're missing everything but like a fraction of 1% of it. So all these things we're missing. And when we stop doing that, it's like life is just constantly presenting us with what we need. And that's, it's always been doing that, but we didn't know it for so long. You know, we, we were wearing blinders, so we couldn't see it. But it's always here for us. And sometimes it comes in the form of cancer or other things, you know, like that. But it's always what we need. It's always presenting us exactly, exactly what we need. See, with our minds, we, we, we need the humility, you know, and to understand that we could not know exactly what we need. It's very complicated. Look at all the things that happened and how one thing led to another. It's could we really sort all that out? You know, really. And, and even the feeling of like, oh, why was I born into this family? This is so much suffering. How come I had to have all this? That, that feeling is part of it too, to feel like horrible about it, not to sit there and go, oh, thank you. I know this is going to be so great for me, to not realize that, you know, and go through all that pain for so long. But the blessing is that when we do wake up, <laughs> we wake up, you know, and we see all of this. And it doesn't matter if we wake up like 30 seconds before we drop dead. <laughs> it's, that's enough. That 30 seconds is, is worth the whole lifetime and many lifetimes. One second is worth that, isn't it? To be fully alive, even just for a second, is worth an entire lifetime. Thank you.